Welcome back to Westwood Engineering. This is for Principles of Engineering, problem 2.17. And we're going through number four here real quick. And what you'll see up on the screen is you will see the, uh, the problem itself. And uh, you're given a triangular truss suspended off of a wall. At joint B, you've got a pin. Joint A, you've got a roller. The very first thing that we want to do over here is we want to try and solve for the angles. And I'll do that in uh, purple over here. So first is solve for the angles. And I can see that right here, I'm going to assume that's perpendicular, and then I've got two interior angles, A and B, or I'm sorry, B and C. So theta B, theta C. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one I do first, but if I look at uh, theta C, and I can say that using the tangent function, I can say that the tangent is equal to uh, uh, of the angle of theta c is equal to the opposite and that happens to be the distance from b to a is equal to 3 uh, over 3. In both instances that's feet so those units cancel out or equals to 1. So I can conversely just take this and say the tangent inverse of 1 equals to 45 degrees. Now by that uh, by that expression I can also say that uh, that my interior angles have to add up to be 180 degrees. So the sum of the angles, sum of theta b plus theta a plus 90 equals to 180 degrees. Therefore, theta b also equals to 45 degrees. So I've solved those two things, and that's where we'll pause. All right, so I've replaced the diagram uh, with a little hand-drawn sketch. And what we indicate is that B, I've got a pin, and C, I've got a roller. My interior angles are 45 degrees for at C and B. Uh, and let's draw some forces onto this uh, particular diagram. My pin, as we know, is going to support two different forces. Uh, it's going to support a force in the x direction, a force in the y. So I'm going to call this basically my reactionary force at B in the x direction and I've got a reactionary force at B in the y direction. Similarly down here I've got a reactionary force in A in the x direction and none in the y. I've got an external load that I'm going to draw with an arrow of 50 pounds and that's a force going down. So as I look at this real quick I'm going to do some real quick analysis and say the only force that I have acting at B has got to be up and it's got to basically counter my uh, 50 pounds down. Uh, at, uh, at the x direction, I'm going to say that I've got, I can have that either push or pull. And my reactionary force, I'm going to say, is going to be resisting that way and pushing out that way because a roller only supports the force going down. Uh, so that kind of makes sense in my mind. So the very first thing I want to do is go with the premise now, and we're on step two of it. We found our interior angles. Step two is I'm going to basically sum the moments uh, about any of the joints has to equal to zero. So under that premise, let's go ahead and take a quick look and rotate about B. So I'm going to just use the moment at B. So sum of the moments at joint B has to equal zero. Therefore, my moments that I have acting at B, I have a minus 50 pounds acting at the distance of 3 feet plus uh, I have got a moment at A which is going to be uh, the reactionary force at A in the x direction times again 3 feet. Now when I look at the signs on these, I put minus 50 pounds, but what I really have is that's going to give me a clockwise moment, and this is going to give me a counterclockwise moment. So that makes sense to me. Uh, if I solve this, what I will see is the reactionary force at A in the x direction is equal to 50 pounds, just by isolating, times 3 feet, divided by 
three feet. These will cancel out, and then that equals to 50 pounds. Uh, it is a positive, which means that my uh, assessment initially for the directions was correct. If it was a negative, I just had my arrows backwards. So I'll write that in as 50 pounds over here on my diagram. My next step uh, is I'm going to say my external forces in the direction of x has to all equal zero. So basically mathematically I'm going to say the sum of the forces externally acting on the body have to equal to zero. And similarly, the sum of the forces externally acting on the body also have to equal zero. That's a prerequisite to be sure that the body is static and not undergoing an acceleration. Not necessarily stationary, just not undergoing acceleration. So looking at the forces in the x direction, what I can then say uh, down beneath here is, therefore I can say that I've got 50 pounds, which is acting to the right or positive, plus a minus the value of r b x has to equal to zero. I can isolate that down and say 50 pounds equals r b x. Uh, with my sign, I said that that is going to the left, so I'll go ahead and write that in there as 50 pounds. Similarly, in the y direction, what I have going is uh, r f b reactionary force at B in the y direction minus 50 pounds, which is the force acting at C, have to equal to zero. Solve that and I just get R reactionary force at B in the y direction equals to 50 pounds. This is up and this is left. So now I've solved for all of my, point, my, my uh, forces acting externally on this Truss, now let's solve for some internal forces. We'll just pick a point and proceed. Okay, let's take a look at point C and solve for the forces at point C. What I've done is a free body diagram that represents point C with 50 pounds down. I've got all the elements in tension on this particular diagram, AC pulling away and uh, BC pulling up. Uh, to counter that 50 pounds uh, B uh, pulling down at point C. So let's first take a look at the element BC and what I can say is at point C so I can say the summation of the forces in the y direction have to equal zero and if I look at BC I'll see that I've got a vector going up at 45 degrees here And I know that that is made up of a component going up and a component going over, vector math. So that's BC, and this is BC in the x direction, BC in the y direction. So if I say that the summation of the forces in the y direction have to equal to zero, what I'm saying then is that uh, if I add BCY plus my minus 50 pounds, that has to equal to zero. Uh, that basically boils down to saying that B, C, Y equals to 50 pounds. Pretty easy. That almost solves B, C. So let's take a real quick look at uh, the vector B, C. So what I've said is I've got my vector going over B, C, X, and I've got my vector going up B, C, Y, which is 50 pounds, and then I've got the hypotenuse here. Now a couple of different ways I could find this, but the easiest way for me to find this is to just use, do some trigonometry. And uh, I know one of my trigonometric identities here is that the sine of theta is equal to my <clears throat> opposite over my hypotenuse. So if I'm trying to find my hypotenuse, which is equal to B, C, let me put that in here, B, C, then what I can see is uh, that is going to equal to the opposite divided by the sine of theta. So all I got to do is substitute on this, uh, pretty straightforward, and I'm going to bring my work back over here and basically say that B, C is now equal to uh, the 50 pounds, which is positive, 
up divided by the sine of theta, which then is uh, root 202, and that's a sine of 45. Let me write that in there. Get my handy dandy calculator out and uh, type that in. And that says that BC is equal to uh, 70.7 pounds. So now that I've solved for BC, I know at a 45 degree angle, uh, I can come back in and find my BCX. And that simply comes out again to say the cosine of theta is equal to my adjacent over the hypotenuse. Uh, or the adjacent is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. I know all these numbers. I know that that's 70.7 pounds times root 2 over 2 ends up being the cosine of theta. And that is going to mean that uh, the vector BCX is equal to 50 pounds. Now, real quick, looking at that, uh, that happens to be, uh, ha have to counter the vector AC. So if I know that BCX is going left, I can come back up here and say, hey, if this is 50 pounds, let me change my ink color here real quick so it stands out. I said that that's 50 pounds. That's 50 pounds. I know both of those. Uh, I can see that AC has to actually go the other way. So I'm going to go ahead and overwrite that arrow and say that AC has to go to counter that. And I know that AC is also 50 pounds. So what I can do now is I can start to draw in a few of my directions. So here's my vector BC. And let me actually choose that. This is my vector BC and that is equal to 70.7 pounds and I happen to know that here is my vector AC and that happens to be 50 pounds. Similarly going this way 50 pounds and that makes perfect sense for what I saw for at A doesn't it? So I also know there's a vector up here that's 70.7 pounds opposing my vector coming in. All right, awesome. So next up, we're going to solve for the internal forces at B. So we're back now. We're going to look at B real quick, and I'll go ahead and... Uh, do B over here and uh, let me go back to the green ink. Uh, so at B I can make another statement that's supposed to be an ampersand at B. I can say that the summation of forces again in the X direction have to equal zero and the summation of the forces in the Y direction have to equal zero. Those are those two conditions that were static. So looking at B if I draw B real quick what I know coming into B is I've got basically 50 pounds that I found when I solved for the moments. So that's 50 pounds pulling away at B. I also know that I've got 50 pounds pulling up at B. And I know that I've got 70 pounds, 70.7 over here, pulling down away at a 45 degree angle. So now all I really have to do is solve for the element here at a, B. There's a couple of quick ways I can do this. I've already found uh, the forces coming in in the X and the Y direction for everything except A, B. So let's do it in the X direction first and say that the summation of the forces in the X direction have to equal to zero. And what we're going to really quickly see is that I've got a vector of 70 pounds, 70.7, and that's at a 45 degree angle. And that's going to make up an X component and a Y component. 
So what I can say is in the x direction, the sum of the forces in x really equals to uh, this vector b c x and I've already found that and I know that b c x is equal to 50 pounds from our step before. So I found that uh, in our prior steps. So basically what I can do is go through and say hey the summation of forces in the x direction is equal to a minus 50 pounds that's my reactionary force at b in the x direction plus 50 pounds. And I go, you know what, that does equal to zero, so that checks out. So let's look in the y direction. I also have already found BCY, so here is BCY, and I know that that is 50 pounds as well, down from our prior step. So knowing that and looking at my diagram, I can redraw this whole diagram and I can say, here's what I have. I've got 50 pounds. And just for clarity's sake, I'm going to get rid of all of the uh, pounds and just put the numbers in. 50, 50, and I have a component BCX, 50 pounds, and I've got a component BCY, which is 50 pounds, and I also have a component AB. Now without doing any further math, and there's that ray BC, without doing any further math, I can see two things happen here. Uh, I'm going to grab a red pen here so we can highlight these, but I can see that my 50 pounds right here in the x direction offsets, and I proved that right there. Similarly, I can see visually that my 50 pounds pulling up is offset there. What that really means is AB equals to zero. So mathematically, we can say that the sum of the forces in the y direction have to equal to zero. My forces are 50 pounds up. That's a plus, plus a minus AB, plus a minus BCY equals to zero. And I put these numbers in, and it's just 50 pounds plus a negative AB, the value, minus 50 pounds equals zero, and I get AB equals to zero. So I can go back and update my diagram here and say, hey, if, if I've got a force in here, I know that my, my force coming down here is uh, actually, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I know that my force coming down here is uh, BA opposing each other. These equal to zero. All right, the last thing we have to do in this trust problem is really straightforward. And as we look at our solutions, what you see is the vector BC is 70 pounds, and that's pulling in towards each other. Uh, or what we can say, uh, as we discussed in class, is this would be put in tension right there. You can see that the, the vector AC, or that element in the truss, is pushing outward. That vector would be in compression. Uh, we have a zero sum in the vector from A to B, so we don't really have any, any uh, forces acting in that to put in tension or compression. So that's the last thing I want to do in our diagram is addition to our numbers. We want to basically be sure our vectors are correct, uh, and then annotate what's in tension and what's in compression. Easy as that. Thanks for watching.